Hi, this is Eric. Um, this is episode 22, and we're going to talk about lower respiratory infections, uh, basically pneumonia. All right, so what is pneumonia? This is an infection within the lung. Uh, it can be uh, from a variety of different things, bacteria, uh, viruses, uh, fungal infections. Uh, you can even get some chemical pneumonias. Um, so there's a, a lot of different uh, potential causes. Now, I've really struggled with this um, with this video, I, I had way too much in there and had to pare it back. And, and so if you're in the medical field, you may find this to be a little bit of an oversimplification. But um, I'm not trying to make physicians out of everybody. I just want to give a, a foundational uh, framework for people to build off of. So here's a picture. Um, the infection is typically localized to one area of the lung. Uh, there's a few pneumonias that can be everywhere on both lungs. Those are going to be something really bad. But uh, most of the things that we think about as pneumonia are localized infections within the lung. Now, if you happen to get a chest x-ray, uh, this is what it might look like. The yellow arrow points to normal lung tissue. The white, uh, I'm sorry, the, the black um, of the aerated lung uh, is easy to see. The red arrow points to a white density, a white uh, area that uh, uh, the x-rays don't penetrate through, and that's filled with uh, liquid or pus. Uh, and that's what a pneumonia looks like on the x-ray. Uh, the long tissue should look exactly like it does on the opposite side. Um, and so you can see a very clear difference there. Now, what are some symptoms of pneumonia? Obviously, uh, a lot of people will have cough, and the, and the cough um, is frequently productive, although it doesn't have to be. Um, fever goes along with pneumonia, and fever is defined as a temperature greater than 100.5 Fahrenheit. Uh, some will have uh, sweats and chills to go along with that and very often you'll have what's called pleuritic chest pain and this is pain um, that's present when you take a deep breath or coughing you have this sharp pain within the chest and severe cases of pneumonia you can get short of breath um, and then like a lot of other infections you can have some global symptoms like fatigue or malaise malaise just means I don't feel good now on exam what, what can you find well you can find either an elevated temperature or a low temperature. Low temperature are actually more worrisome. People that have hypothermia uh, have a much um, higher rate of mortality. Uh, you can have an increased respiratory rate. Uh, again, a normal adult rate is uh, somewhere between 12 and 20 breaths per minute. Your heart rate can be fast. Again, a normal adult heart rate is typically less than 100 beats per minute. Or you can get hear stuff on a stethoscope with abnormal lung findings. Now, uh, there's a variety of different things. We can say ronchi or rails or vesicular uh, breath sounds and these types of things. But what I would do is I would just get a stethoscope, and I would listen to as many normal lungs as you can. Listen to your own, listen to family members, and just learn what normal is. Because even if you don't know what to call an abnormal lung sound, when you listen and you're like, that's not normal, you'll be at least able to detect what's normal and what's not normal. Now, let's talk about bronchitis for a minute. Bronchitis is not a lower respiratory tract infection. This is an upper respiratory tract infection. But how do you tell the difference whether you have bronchitis or whether you have pneumonia? Well, bronchitis is typically a cough that lasts for several days, as much as two weeks. It can be as long as three weeks. Uh, the cough can be productive. And again, color does n of the sputum, color of the, your loogie that you're coughing up, has nothing to do with bacteria presence. All right, this just is simply cells, and so you can have shedding of your uh, epithelial cells within the bronchial tree, and that can give a discoloration to the mucus. So when people say, well, my, I'm coughing up green stuff, that doesn't mean anything related to whether or not bacteria are present or not. Uh, you can get bronchospasm, which is kind of a, an asthma-like thing where you get some wheezing, uh, some spasm of the, the bronchus. Um, and if you have fever with bronchitis, then that would probably point you more towards something else, like a flu, influenza, or a pneumonia. Now with bronchitis, um, a lot of times, as you could guess, if it lasts 20 days, 21 days, that's three weeks. So sometimes people go through a couple rounds of antibiotics. They have this cough, they go to the doctor, they get a round of antibiotics. A week later, they're no better. They go back, they get a different antibiotic. And then finally, by the time you finish taking that, anti that second antibiotic, you're all better. So you think, boy, this was really bad. I had to take two courses of antibiotics. It probably has nothing to do with the antibiotics. And it's just the fact that it's going to last 20 days. Now, most of these 
or after a viral infection and you get some inflammation of the uh, bronchial tree and of the upper respiratory tract. So a vast majority of these are post-viral inflammation, so therefore antibiotics aren't going to do squat. Uh, how do you treat bronchitis? Well, you give cough suppressants, dextromethorphan, cough syrups. You can give non anti-inflammatories like aspirin or ibuprofen. You can give acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. Um, the big thing that really seems to help in shorten the duration of illness is albuterol, which is uh, uh, the same medicine that asthma patients take. It's one of those puffers that you can uh, inhale. And you can also take something called a mucolytic, which basically helps break up the mucus. So. If I were a patient and I went to the doctor for bronchitis, I would hope to get albuterol and maybe a strong cough suppressant. But if I was given antibiotics, I, I wouldn't take them. I'd store them. I'd save them for the future because uh, the, uh, the antibiotics that you get for bronchitis will probably help with the pneumonia. And if it's just bronchitis and antibiotics aren't going to help, then why waste it? I would put it away and store it for a rainy day. Now, let's go back to pneumonia. So let's leave bronchitis, go back to pneumonia. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what we call in the medical field is CAP, C-A-P, which stands for Community Acquired Pneumonia. Now the most common causes for Community Acquired Pneumonia are strep pneumonia, mycoplasma, haemophilus, and chlamydia. Um, I misspelled that one. Um, but chlamydia is not, uh, there's a variety of different types of chlamydia. This happens to be chlamydia pneumonia. It has nothing to do with the sexually transmitted disease, chlamydia. Um, but these are the, the big four. So if you're going to give an antibiotic, you want to cover these big four. Um, now, the mortality with pneumonia is not insignificant, 10%. Um, you know, it's weighted on the extremes. The very young and the very old seem to be the ones hit most with mortality. Now, one thing you can do is um, you can get on the Internet and print this out so you know how to calculate it and you know, put it away in a folder uh, in case you don't have access to the Internet. But there's something called the Pneumonia Severity Index. It's also known as a port score. And it allows you to put in data. And if you don't know something, just leave it blank because uh, you won't have blood work, so you, you're not going to know what the serum sodium is or anything like that. But just put in what you know, uh, and it'll give you a rough estimate of the mortality associated with the infection. Uh, and you'll see that if you're elderly and you have heart disease and diabetes and these other types of things, it's going to increase your mortality. Uh, and again, that can just kind of give you some expectation of what the future might hold or whether you really need to push to evacuate this person from a remote setting and get them to a hospital. Uh, here's an example um, off the website listed. You know, it, for all the females out there, if you're female, you actually take 10 points off the score. So female seems to be protective uh, and lessens your chance of uh, having a mortality associated with the pneumonia. Now, the antibiotic decisions for community-acquired pneumonia can be very complicated. I mean, there can be atypical organisms. You can have things like pseudomonas if you've got immunosuppression because you're taking chemotherapy or cancer drugs or your HIV. If you're exposed to certain parts of the country, you might have a fungal infection like parts of Arizona. Uh, viruses can cause pneumonia. It can be related to an allergen in the air. Um, if you happen to catch pneumonia inside the hospital, it's more likely to be a more difficult to treat pneumonia than you get it outside the uh, hospital. Uh, and then there's always methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, which can cause these bad skin infections, and I've talked about on prior uh, video with uh, skin infections. Uh, but it can also lead to a pneumonia, um, and particularly after uh, a bout of flu, after influenza, there are rare cases where you get this severe methicillin-resistant uh, infection that just tears your lungs up within 48 hours and can cause death very quickly and otherwise young healthy people. So again, I'm, let's, let's forget some of these more complicated decisions, just go on with some basic foundational stuff. Uh, let's assume just community-acquired pneumonia, it's not anything freaky, it's not one of these weird fungal infections. Um, what would I treat it with? Well, first line are considered macrolides, and, and antibiotics in the macrolide family include azithromycin. Uh, a lot of people may have heard of a Z-Pak. This is a Zithromax as the trade name. Um, you can have a drug called clarithromycin and also doxycycline. Now, of all these drugs, doxycycline is probably the cheapest. Um, it's easy, you know, uh, um, easily tolerated. Uh, this is one of my favorite medications because it just does so much. Um, and here's the dosages for a typical adult. Uh, if you want to know the kid doses, again, I'd go to Barnes & Noble. I'd get a book on uh, medications, a nursing book on, on medications, and that should have all that listed out in there. 
Now your second line are, are a class of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. Um, Cipro, everybody may have heard of Cipro when uh, all this anthrax stuff came out uh, a long, oh, back in the day. Um, and these are drugs like ciprofloxacin. You've got levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, uh, gemlofloxacin. Um, Cipro is now generic and is cheap. These can be very expensive. Um, the moxifloxacin, uh, for just for me trying to buy it, can be around fifty to sixty dollars a pill, um, which is puts it outside of a price range for I think most of us. Uh, but these are the second line drugs. Levofloxacin may be the most uh, affordable of the, on that list. Uh, and again, Cipro is in uh, the fluoroquinolone. Now we're having increasing resistance to ciprofloxacin. Uh, but if I'm trying to decide between Cipro or nothing, I'll probably go with Cipro. Now you can also do th some things like uh, percussing the back and using steam. So you get in a, a bathroom and put the shower on really hot and, and get steam in the air. Um, and percussion is just basically t taking a cupped hand and pounding on somebody's back that has pneumonia. And you just pound on it to kind of shake loose the, the, the mucus and help them to cough it up and get it out. And... Um, but uh, without antibiotic treatment, um, pneumonia can be uh, very difficult to, uh, to cure. Uh, and prior to the invention of antibiotics or the discovery of antibiotics, uh, uh, there was a lot of deaths associated with pneumonia. Now, again, this is a very basic, very simplified approach using community-acquired pneumonia um, only. I'm not talking about tuberculosis. I'm not talking about the atypicals. Um, again, it can make pneumonia treatment quite a complicated medical decision. But if we just go with the basics about what's going to be most common, community-acquired pneumonia is the most common um, with the, the four uh, microorganisms listed. And either the fluoroquinolones or the microlides uh, will treat uh, these common infections. So again, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm oversimplifying this a little bit, but uh, uh, we want to keep it within the range of, uh, uh, of reasonable understanding. Um, again, comments are always welcome. Uh, I, there's always good discourse going back and forth, and I typically will forget something or somebody will bring up a very good point that I didn't talk about in the video. So again, uh, comments are greatly appreciated, and I appreciate everybody's time for watching. Thanks.